The new Dragon Ball series, Super Dragon Ball Heroes, is going to be released in July, and it's going to be based on the Prison Planet art from the Japanese arcade card game Dragon Ball Heroes. Now, since the game was never actually released outside of Japan, most of us have never had a chance to play it, so there are a lot of people out there that just are not familiar with it or don't know much about it, and perhaps you're one of those people. Well, I'm going to spend the next month changing that. Go ahead, click on the little red subscribe button down there, and click on the little notification bell thing as well. And then stick with me for the next few weeks, and by the time the series is released, you will know everything that there is to know about Dragon Ball Heroes. I can assure you of that. However, I cannot stress this enough. Everything that I'm going to be talking about over the next few weeks will be based on the games, the guidebooks, and established Dragon Ball lore, but I have no way of knowing how the anime is going to play out, how close it's going to follow the source material, or which of the characters that I'm going to be introducing you guys to that will actually even be in the series. However, there is one character that we do know for a fact will be in the anime, and that is Fu. So I've been trying to figure out where I wanted to start this, and since Fu is a confirmed character, the main antagonist, and one of the most important characters in the series, I figured that he would be a good place to start. But before I go any further, <laughs> is it just me or does Fu kind of look like Whis or one of the angels and Kabuto from Naruto and a baby? Just, just saying, kind of does. So there are three characters that I'm sure that we're all well aware of um, that I want to mention first. Dabira, the king of the demon realm, his sister Toa, and the artificial being created by Toa, Mira. Fu is a demon from the demon realm, obviously, and he's considered the son of Toa and Mira, which also makes him Dabira's nephew. However, technically, he's an artificial being. He's a mutant clone created from the cells of Mira and Toa, and it was created to destroy the time patrol and to revive the demon realm. Now, thanks to Mira's cells um, that were used to create him, he is insanely powerful. And because of, to because of Toa's cells, he's nothing short of a genius, and as a mutant, he possesses abilities that are far beyond what Mira and Toa are capable of doing. But I'll get to those in a moment. According to Dabira, Fu is the rightful successor to his throne as King of the Demon Realm. Unfortunately though, things don't always work out as planned, uh, because Fu has no interest in fulfilling the purpose for what she was created, and he has no desire to be the King of the Demon Realm, meaning that they actually created a being that is too intelligent and too powerful for them to control. Now being a demon though, and obviously being the nephew of the King of the Demon Realm, understandably, um, this causes people to believe that he is evil and that he's an underling of his uncle, but this could not be any further from the truth. While he does screw with time, it's not for the purpose of causing destruction or even gaining revenge for his parents. Instead, it's the pursuit of knowledge that drives him, and while his methods are questionable, because obviously screwing with time is a bad thing, he does in fact have good intentions and wants to help others. Instead of fighting, he loves science, and the possibilities that his changes in history can create. Fu's interest in science goes so far to experimenting on scenarios like the mechanics of fighting and using time rifts and paradoxes for his own benefit, such as creating time paradoxes on purpose in order to absorb more power. However, once gaining some benefit from his experiments, Fu does tend to try to use these benefits to better the world, making him neither truly good nor evil. Um, this upcoming anime is going to be about the Prison Planet arc from that game, and Prison Planet is just one of his experiments. So that's who he is. I mean, he's, he's a good guy. He's not really even a bad guy. He's just, he's curious. He's, he's smart and he's curious. Um, but what can he do now? What are his powers? What are his abilities? That's actually a good question. <laughs> um, all I know is that he is able to manipulate time rifts and summon beings from other worlds and timelines. And he's a damn good swordsman, but... I'll talk about those in more detail in a moment. First, though, I need to go. I need to go find out what else he can do. I'll, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Thanks for waiting. <laughs> right, so, like I said, though, he has the ability to open up time rifts and summon various fighters from different worlds and different timelines. So, when you're watching the anime. Once it comes out and you start to wonder why all these random characters that should not even exist in each other's realities are all present on the prison planet, this is why. This is the ability that's going to allow us to watch Super Saiyan Blue Goku fight Super Saiyan 4 Goku. Yay. 
And yeah, I said that he was a good swordsman. Um, if you watch the intro videos that I posted from the game a little while ago, uh, you'll see a clip of him and Super Saiyan Trunks having a sword fight, and they're fighting pretty evenly. Also, at one point in Xenoverse, he doesn't follow Dibiro's orders, so Dibiro tried to use his stone spit stuff um, on him, but with his sword, Fu was able to deflect it and caused it to hit Dibiro, turning him into stone. He obviously has all the abilities that we've come to expect from characters in Dragon Ball. Flying, key blasts and stuff, whatever, all the regular nonsense. But he has some abilities though that do really stand out. Now as far as I know, um, he's the only character that has the ability to turn invisible. And when he does this, not even the gods are able to see or sense him. And this gives him a definite advantage in fights, even though he doesn't like to fight, so whatever. He has one ability known as the Infinity Explosion, in which he surrounds himself with swirling dark energy uh, before causing a massive explosion. Now he can charge the attack to make it even more powerful. He has Petrifying Spit, which is the attack that Jibiro uses when he spits and turns things into stone. He can breathe fire like a dragon, which is pretty awesome. One of his abilities though is called the Phantom Fist. I'm having a really hard time trying to figure out how to explain it. Like, basically, he surrounds himself with energy, and then if somebody goes to attack him, what they attack instantly becomes an afterimage, and he just randomly just reappears somewhere else. He's able to create time rifts and absorb their energy, absorbing everything that lies beyond the rift as well, timeline and all. He has an ability that's very similar to a shadow clone in Naruto. He has the ability to change his appearance any way that he wants to. He, he can appear as another person. Um, at one point, though, he actually tricked Goku and Vegeta into thinking that they were training with Whis by taking Whis's form. He also has the ability to resurrect the dead. As you can see, dude is totally overpowered. It, but he doesn't like to fight, so Kenpachi would be very disappointed. Um, because that's the same universe, might as well be. Um, there's more that I could be saying about him, specific things that he does throughout the series, but I'll be covering all of that when I start doing the videos about the actual events in the game, or throughout the, the timeline. Um, for now, though, I just wanted to explain who this guy is and what he's capable of doing. However, if you have any questions, post them in the comments, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. So moving forward, though, in the series, I'm going to be focusing on the characters for the next few episodes, next few videos. Um, I want to explain them before I start explaining the actual storyline. Um, that way nobody has to be like, what the hell is this guy talking about? But like I said in the beginning, unsubscribe, click the bell, and stick with me over the next few weeks, and by the time the series begins, you will have a pretty solid understanding of Dragon Ball Heroes. But that's all I've got for you guys in this video. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Uh, do all the other good stuff, and I will see you guys next time.